Hi there. Listen, can you do me a favour? If you've got anything in your workshop that's plugged into one of these little domestic remotes, then pause the video and go and unplug it. Seriously, do it now. Don't wait. I'll see you in a minute. And welcome back. I had a close call recently involving one of these little remotes. If you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, then you might want to consider it. Or if you're a Patreon supporter, and if you are, then thank you very much. Uh, if you do either of those things, then you'll probably know this story already. But I'm going to tell it again because it bears repeating. Also, I've switched off monetization on this video. There are no ads because I want as many people to see it as possible. So please do share it freely and widely. So I came in one morning, I hadn't been in here in the workshop for a couple of days, and when I got outside my door I could hear something running. I got my door open and opened up the shutters and was hit by a blast of heat and noise, and it was my big extractor, the one I use for the planar thicknesser and the table saw and my CNC, and it had clearly been running for some time because it was red hot, literally the motor was too hot to touch, and the inside of the workshop here was like a furnace. Now this place is built like a brick outhouse and it generally stays pretty cool, but once it's warmed up it keeps its heat like a storage radiator, and it was and still is stifling in here. In fact the temperature remains at uh, 27 degrees still. We'll come back to this little dingus later on. Now, like a lot of folks with workshops, I had that extractor on a remote socket like this one. It's very convenient to be able to switch on a big extractor remotely because they typically don't have power takeoffs. But, and it's obvious when you say it out loud like this, and you may well have experienced this yourself if you have one of these, they can be triggered by other remotes or sometimes they just randomly come on due to heat. Now, we have had a spell of particularly hot weather recently. But just to be sure, I checked all of my domestic remotes at home because I do live just across the street and they were all fine, no interference there at all. So a little bit of a head scratcher as to why this was triggered. And as I say, it was a close call. We can all figure out the potential of a red hot motor sitting on top of a 50 litre metal drum full of sawdust. And I was fortunate to catch it in time. But it did get me wondering about workshop safety from a fire point of view. And I thought I'd put those thoughts together in a video just for reference. Now it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, I am not an expert in fire safety. This video is simply me joining a few mental dots together, and if you've got any concerns about the suitability of your installation, especially with regard to insurance compliance or fire regulations in a commercial premises, you should consult an expert who's familiar with your area. Often your local fire brigade, fire service, or fire station can be very helpful here. Now, the fundamental problem, of course, is that workshops just don't lend themselves to being fireproof because, well, the raw materials are highly combustible. What we see as our wood pile, our stock, others would probably think of as a potential bonfire. It doesn't help either that we also use flammable materials, paint and thinners, oils and lacquers, waxes and varnishes, all quite literally fuel to the fire. And that was the main reason for me making my paint and flammables cabinet a few years back. And I think it's something that's well worth considering, and not just to satisfy some insurance policy checkbox, just for general peace of mind. Personally, if I was making one again, and I'll probably have to because the one I have is kind of small, then I'd make it floor standing and on casters so that you can wheel it out of the workshop quickly if you really need to. When it comes to actual fire fighting, and hopefully it'll never come to that, it's not recommended, certainly here in the UK, that anyone attempts to tackle a fire larger than a waste basket. That's not a 70 litre waste bin like this one, it's a bucket sized waste basket. So I have a couple of things to hand should I ever need them. Uh, one of these is a small 1100mm square fire blanket, useful perhaps for smothering that waste basket if it ever starts to smolder. And the other is a one kilo dry powder fire extinguisher. Now it's dry powder because they're safe to use on electrical equipment. And certainly in this workshop, an electrical fire would be the most likely. Obviously, you don't want to be pouring water or foam into an electrical appliance that might still be plugged in. Now, neither of these were expensive. I think I bought the pair of them for 25 or 26 pounds. There are links down below. And of course, they are priceless in terms of peace of mind. 
Now moving on to alarms and detectors. Again, because of the workshop environment, regular smoke alarms don't work that well. Typically, you get lots of nuisance triggering because of the dust in the air. But you can get heat detectors, which work in a similar way. They just look for rapid rises in temperature. And the good thing about those, like this one, is that if you have a garage workshop or workspace close to your house, you can link them to your domestic smoke alarms. So if one triggers, they all go off. Which leads us to the next problem, of course. What if your workshop is in a separate building? Mine's a commercial space across the street from where I live. Or you might have a shed at the end of your garden. A heat alarm won't do much good there if there's nobody to hear it. Which is where this little guy comes in. Uh, this is a smart Wi-Fi enabled room thermometer. And the neat thing about this is that you can set it to send notifications to your phone if the temperature goes outside of a set range. I set mine to a few degrees higher than the ambient temperature and left a fan heater on in the other room. And I picked up an alert before I even got across the street back to my house. Now, obviously this is not an alternative to an alarm. It's not detecting fire or smoke. It's just just alerting you to a rise in temperature and obviously you'll need to decide if it's suitable for your circumstances. If your workshop gets a lot of sun on it for example then it may make it harder to set an appropriate range. And it's also worth saying that whilst putting on my tinfoil hat uh, that yes it is made by a company I've never heard of in Shenzhen in China and yes you do need to create an account with them and yes it is all cloud-based so the data all goes up to the cloud and then back down again to you and if any or all of that troubles you then simply don't do it but for me for my peace of mind I think a burner email address and a one-time password is a small price to pay for the significant peace of mind that something like this brings. Uh, talking of price, about £43 for this Wi-Fi version. If you think you can get away with a shorter range Bluetooth version, then they're available at a much lower price, around £12 or £13. Links down in the video description to everything that I've mentioned here today. So let's wrap this up with a quick recap. As always, prevention is better than cure. So keep flammable liquids, paint thinner, as lacquer, oils and waxes for example, separate and ideally in a flame retardant cabinet. If you're fitting sensors in a workshop then go for a heat sensor like this one, not a smoke detector, and where possible link it to your house system so that they all sound the alarm if one of them is triggered. And if you have an independent workspace then a simple smart thermometer like this may well give you some peace of mind. More than anything though, do get into the habit of unplugging equipment that isn't actively being used. And please, if you're using them and they are convenient, always unplug equipment attached to these little remote sockets. And that's it for this week. I was very fortunate to get away with my close call, but others may not be. So please share this video as widely as possible. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to join me next time when I'll be back here and hopefully making stuff. Uh, and do consider subscribing for more regular weekly workshop videos or come and join the Patreon party at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop for additional exclusive content or behind the scenes videos. And I'd like to thank all the folks who do just that as their contributions not only help me to keep the lights on here, but also make it possible for me to make regular freely available content, including public service type announcements like this one for the 10 minute workshop channel. That really is it for this week though. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.